Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my watercolor paints in my watercolor palette. Have you ever wondered if there is a right or a wrong way to set out your paints in your palette? The answer is no, there isn't really a right or wrong way, but there are a few tips and tricks that will make it easier for you that might set you up for success when you're starting out that can help you learn color theory and mix your colors for botanical painting a little bit more easily. Okay, so you can see that I have two watercolor palettes here. This is the current one that I showed you in the intro of this video. And it is a Munio brand palette, but I did mostly, besides actually three Munio colors left, switch this out uh, to have artist quality paints. Munio is artist quality, but it's um, not quite as the high standard as the Windsor, Newton, Daniel Smith, or Holbein artist quality paints, which are light, fast, um, archival quality. So I've actually squeezed the tube paint into these little pans, and I took out some of the colors out of some of the pans um, for the Munio and used the tube paint in these and just saved the little puck in a plastic bag. And I also ordered some extra pans that are just empty pans online on Amazon to um, create more colors for the palette. So I used to use the plate here. This is just a dinner plate and you can see all of my colors and actually I'll use it, put it this way, because this is kind of how I arrange my colors in order of the color wheel. Um, and so what I want to do is do that with this, because it kind of was just put in order the way the Munio colors were, and I don't know exactly the rhyme or reason to the order they were, because there's yellows here and neutrals there, which is not really the way um, a color wheel works. So. On the color wheel, you have yellow, and then you go to orange and red and purple, blues to greens, and then um, I sort of slot in the neutrals between there. So, and then you can see there's a cooler and a warmer version of most of these colors. And that is how I work with my paints. It's a, a great way to um, go about learning your colors and learning to mix colors for botanicals and with my style of painting I always mix up at least three, two to three versions of each color and I like a cool version and a warm version so this setup is really helpful for that. So in this video I am just going to show you how I do that and I switched away from this plate palette uh, just because I found that I liked how the paint comes off the pans and then for making my YouTube videos and art classes this did not fit on the screen as well and this I could show all my paints and how I'm mixing them. So that is mostly why I switched. So some of these are in order. I have my white and uh, Joan Brilliant here. Whoops. Some of these might be a little bit hard to get out, but basically I am just going to go around and, if I can, get them out and, and move them around to the order that I want them to be in. Another reason I like these pans versus the plate is because if I want to change the order like I am right now, I can, or say I want to try a different green or a different black or something than the one that I had set out, then it's a lot easier to switch it around um, rather than having them all sort of dried up on the plate. I can move these around as much as I would like and I find it really enjoyable to just play around with my colors. And for some reason this one pan is giving me quite a bit of grief to get it out. There we go. So I have my Munio white and then I'm using Aurelian which is like a transparent uh, lemon yellow from Windsor Newton. I have New Gamboge and then Quinacridone gold and then I'm going to slot in my Joan Brilliant here which is by a uh, paint 
um, color by Holbein. Then I have my Naples Yellow and Yellow Ochre and raw sienna and then this is where I'm going to switch things up because I'm going to get my red oranges in here so I am going to have to make another color chart and I'll do that in the next video so now I'm putting these in I'll be able to just pick them out now so I have my orange yellow that's Munio's a Munio brand um, and then I have Brilliant Orange by Holbein, Pyral Orange by Daniel Smith, and then sort of moving into the reds here. This one's sort of stuck together. This is Quinacridone Coral by Daniel Smith. And then I'll see if should be able to fit one more in here and then I have Scarlet Lake perfect and now on the next line to change all this around I have them really jammed in here so the first one is not necessarily easy to get out so I'm going to try this one and then slide them that way yes that is much better of an idea it's getting caught otherwise under this little lip there we go. There's a will, there's a way. All right, so I've got my reds and I'm just going to keep these in order as I go. And you could certainly have less paint than this. By all means, you do not need 52 colors to do paints. Uh, I'd never had that many before and I kind of just tried the Munio palette and it was so fun having all those colors so I just wanted to have more and I already had so many tube paints so I sort of built my own with what I had. And I still have some of that Munio paint as I mentioned. I just kept some of it for more sort of fun loose floral projects and then I also made a little smaller 12 pan palette for my stepdaughter who's eight to use um, because it's really nice quality paint and be perfect for her to use those colors. So now I've got my reds now what was this color here? That is Opera Rose, and then we have Brilliant Pink, and then we have Permanent Rose and Permanent Magenta, and this is Quinacridone Magenta. There we go. See what I mean, how it's hard kind of to tell the colors of it looking like this in the pan and then like this on the paper. This is why this is so handy. All right, so now I have the pinks in. I'm just going to take this one out because that's in the wrong spot. Needed a, a new home for that one. And now here are my purples. So I'm starting in with the Cobalt Violet, Windsor & Newton Bright Violet. This is Holbein. It's really beautiful, sort of bright, almost fluorescent type purple. Windsor Violet and then Perylene Violet and moon glow a tight squeeze so yes these palettes usually come with 48 so one less but i managed to just squeeze an extra one in so it's flush i wanted to take a quick minute to let you know that i'm doing a live zoom workshop on saturday march 12th at 10 a.m pacific time and everyone is welcome you're welcome to sign up and it's a free workshop and I'll just be going over my three-step painting method and explaining that a little bit more, plus a few common challenges people have with watercolor when they're starting out and how you can, um, you know, overcome those challenges and use the framework and step method that I use to paint botanicals to get results quicker. And I'll be demonstrating a little bit of how I paint a purple crocus flower. So I would love to see you there. Again, there's no charge to attend. 
and the uh, link to register will be in the video description below. So just hit the link and sign up and then you'll get an email link to click on the Zoom meeting and then you can join in. I hope to see you there. Okay, so now I have everything in order of the color wheel, the yellows, the oranges, the reds, pinks, purples, blues, greens, neutrals. This is a gray of gray, so it's lighter, but it is kind of in the neutral fa uh, uh, section. So, and the neutrals don't, they're sort of in the middle, more of the color wheel with the grays and the blacks. So that's why I just put them here. Um, but it still really helps me when I am mixing my colors and then some of these colors are fairly new. I just wanted to show you this is a Joan Brilliant by Holbein. It's a really beautiful yellow color and uh, I will just show you a few of my favorites until next video when we do the whole color chart um, and then kind of breaking the rules with traditional botanical watercolor painting because I chose a few new colors by Holbein that are a little bit more opaque. And this is um, bright pink by Holbein. It's a really nice light pink. It does have a bit of white in it, but it's still quite nice and transparent. And then this is lavender. I haven't actually made a painting with this one yet but I was just in love with these colors. So beautiful. And Horizon Blue. Really pretty. And then the Gray of Gray is a nice sort of subtle, very um, neutral gray. And so these don't all look sort of like a natural colored palette. They're more of a pastel-y palette here, but um, there are certainly uses for them in botanical paintings mixed with other ones or on their own. And um, another color I really love is neutral tint. And this is really helpful in botanical painting, using it to make uh, shadow colors, darker purples, mixing it with green. And I've been using a lot of that lately. Um, I discovered Holbein, well, I've known about them for a while and I've had this bright violet for a while, but I, I didn't realize how good of a value they, they are. They're a Japanese company and they are artist quality and light fast. This is the bright violet. Um, and they're a little less expensive than Windsor and Newton and Daniel Smith, so it's, Nice to try some new colors and save a little money. And let's show you one more color. Which one shall it be? Actually, I wanted to just test what this is here. Okay, so that looks, yes, that's Van Dyke Brown. And then this must be Paraline Green here. Beautiful, beautiful dark green by Windsor & Newton. All right, so my palette is now arranged. If you want to try something like this with your tin palette or put them out on a plate if you have tube paints, then I'd encourage you to experiment and just have fun. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll get a notification every time I post a new video and that really helps the channel out. So if you do like the content, then please do click the subscribe button. It helps my videos be shown to more people, more people find them, and I can post more videos. So it's a win-win. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. And again, if you would like to transform how you paint botanical paintings, how you approach your watercolor painting, 
then do sign up for the free watercolor workshop on Zoom. The link is in the description below and I will see you there.